right, it's August 12, 2012 at 12.57 p.m. Hello, Susan, Debbie, Robert, Ryan, and Kevin. Greetings from Costa Rica. Pretty rough, Jason, or how that? Yeah, it was really amazing, <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, <laughs> love it's it. an adventure. Yeah, yeah, I take that adventure every single week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just got off the boat in the Osa Peninsula of Costa Rica. On a map, this place is located on the South Pacific coast just north of Panama. The Osa was once an island. It joined the mainland three million years ago just after the North and South American continents converged. At this continental bridge occurred the greatest event of biological exchange and mixing ever. This biological hotspot is now home to approximately five to 6,000 plants, 10,000 species of insects, and over 600 animal species, making up about 2% of the world's biodiversity. To put this in context, the United States has around 2.5% of the world's biodiversity, but is 6,500 times bigger than the Osa Peninsula. That one spot where we ate lunch, had it in the coolest spot though. That is amazing. That is just picture perfect. Well now we're going to hike into the ranger station where hopefully the rangers can watch after our camping packs so we can spend the day out sampling tree canopy heights. First, take the compass. So Sean's writing these numbers down because he has better handwriting and he's instructed me how to do it. So I've now turned into a scientist. Then I'll use the laser range finder. And then here is the inclinometer. So I'm looking down to measure a negative 10 degrees at the base and way up at the top, 43 degrees to the top. So we now have the angle, the distance, and the bearing to the tree. <laughs> Costa Rica is recognized worldwide for its conservation of biodiversity. Ecotourism has grown into a huge part of the economy and protected over a million hectares of tropical forests. But it is a driving force for development into rural areas. In this region, modern infrastructure is advancing into areas of formerly undeveloped tropical rainforests and non-intensive agricultural lands. This is troubling because it threatens the peninsula with deforestation and habitat fragmentation which are widely recognized as the two greatest contemporary threats to biodiversity around the world. My project will examine changes in land use related to deforestation. Or is it reforestation that we're actually seeing here? 
The front edge of my computer analysis combines satellite images and on-the-ground knowledge to understand what is happening in the real world. In some of the most remote areas, green technologies, and here I'm talking about solar panels, hydrologic systems, and even cell phones, appear to be leapfrogging traditional infrastructure and maybe reducing the deforestation that I might have expected to see in this area. Well, right now it is raining rather hard and we have to hold up here for about an hour before we cross the river to catch my taxi. I'm gonna be taking another route out to a different pickup point on the other side of the Rio Tigre. When it rains like this, that river can get pretty large and and can be impassable. So what's that feel like? <laughs> Feet still hurting? Yeah, a little bit. That sand wet feet for too long is not really uh, conducive to, to lack of blisters. <laughs> After some time in the OSA, I couldn't help but recognize the complexity of the situation. About five meters. So it's, I will note that in here. In some locations, secondary rainforests are overtaking fallow farms as rural farmers take jobs in tourism, and in other areas, they're farming trees as alternatives to cutting down the natural rainforest. My hypothesis is that deforestation differs based upon access, topography, and regional economic interests. The interesting thing here is that the combination of the new context of ecotourism with an innate sense of self-preservation may actually be reversing deforestation. This is what I'm here to learn about. That's why the last piece of the puzzle is to support the computer mapping with a social survey. This is more than image pixels. In order to stay relevant, the social context of the Osa Peninsula must be accounted for. In the world of science, we might say, socializing the pixel and pixelizing the social. It is June 18th and I just arrived at the Tamandu Lodge in the hills in the middle of the Osa Peninsula. This right here is my cabina to the right and my outhouse to the left and wherein it might seem a little bit simple, it is actually quite comfortable. I look forward to my stay here. Today I had some excellent interactions and, and conversations with people including two interviews and I'm feeling much more confident about my project and about what I'm going to get done while I'm here. This project represents a unique opportunity to identify practical alternatives for the environmental degradation that normally occurs at the frontier of modern industrialization. The implication of scientific ideas that we're developing here in the Osa Peninsula really do apply to what's happening around the world.